Hello everybody, welcome to Blue Marble Science. Cavendish Episode 6. Well, you know, five months ago, we started out with the idea of building a machine like Henry Cavendish built in 1798 to determine the density of the Earth and in turn, the universal gravitational constant. Well, I'm pleased to tell you that this is what we ended up with. This is the completed blue marble science version of Cavendish. Now, you know, a lot's gone on in the last five months. And when I made the last video, I had just finished uh, the framework that supports the large masses. But there were some more things that had to be done after that. The experiment itself needed a table to sit on. And I decided that I would just build something very similar to a workbench. That's nothing more than an inch and a half by three inch spruce construction lumber that's been planed down and glued up into a tabletop. And I like this sort of construction because it's simple, it's uh, straightforward, and it's not hard to do at all. After you make the top, all you need to do is attach some skirt boards and end boards and build some legs. And I decided to use the same sort of lumber that we used for the posts in the framework. And that ended up with a really nice, rugged, heavy table that won't be susceptible to vibration. So the only thing else it needed was four dowels that would be positioned to support the enclosure at its support points. So there you can see those things installed. Now, of course, we didn't want to just leave it as raw wood, so I put a couple of coats of tongue oil finish on it. And then it was time to set things up. So the framework and the table both have levelers under each of the legs. The first mission was to level the framework. Secondly, the table had to be made perfectly level. And then finally, the table needed to be accurately positioned under the center of rotation of the large masses. So that's what you see here is the plumb bob that is hanging from the shaft that those large masses rotate around. I needed to do one other thing. The original torsion beam was made out of pine and it was just a prototype anyway. So I wanted to remake that beam and I made it out of some very straight grain poplar. There's a picture of the beam and here's a little bit of video as I was attaching the support wires and torsion wire. Got all the wires in there. I remembered how difficult this was the first time so I decided just to put a little block up here, that little ferrule that the uh, or sleeve that all the wires go through is just stuck in a hole in it. Maybe you can see it right there. And the wires pulled up through it and these two screws work out to be pretty handy for maintaining the tension. And I know I've got the tension about the same because just like a guitar, those notes are the same. Let's see if we can hear it again. I'll put them up a bit closer. And a little sharp. <laughs> Not bad. This is actually the torsion wire. But I want to get some solder up inside that, that little sleeve before I pull this up any further. In fact, it doesn't really have to go up any further. It can stay just like that. I may leave it that way. So, let's clean off the tip on the soldering iron. Let's see what we can do here.
So there you have it. We're done. So how do we find G with this device? Well, it turns out we can derive that equation at the bottom of the page, and I'll do that for you in a later video. But by knowing or measuring these five things, the length of the torsion beam, the movement of that arm as we change position with the weights, the distance between the center of masses when the weights are in proximity to each other, the period of oscillation, and the mass of the large spheres. By knowing those five things, we easily calculate G. And it turns out that only two of those things, the movement of the arm and the period of oscillation have to be measured. The other three things are fixed. They're fixed by the design. So what's up next? Well, we need to set up the instrumentation. And after I play with this thing for a while, I need to write a test plan. And then following that test plan, I need to collect and analyze the data. And with all of that in hand, we can publish the results. So I want to leave you with a few thoughts. Sapili so wood for the project, 170 bucks. A couple of really heavy lead balls, $400. Seeing mass attract mass, that's priceless. Hey, thanks for watching. Stay tuned, folks. There's more to come. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons down there. Hit the little bell if you want notifications. And if you'd like to contribute to the project, visit me at paypal.me slash bluemarblescience. A link to that's up in the description. I want to thank the patrons and all the people who have contributed. It has really made it possible. So with that, I'll see you guys with some results in the not-too-distant future. Thanks again.